Oh, we're three wide. Oh, we've tracked blockage. Oh, dear. Hi guys, Jimmy Fluke here for Apex Racing Team, and today we take a look at the brand new Renault Clio Cup. Um, the fifth generation of the Clio uh, has come to iRacing, and uh, yeah, today we're going to take a quick look at how it drives, how it feels, and how it races as well. Uh, we're going to have a pop at Knock Hill um, with the AI as well, um, and we'll see how it goes. So let's get stuck in. All right, so we're going to take a quick look at what we've got the Renault Clio here. So I've just taken the open set, I made a couple of little adjustments. I mean, you've got your usual stuff with tire pressures. Right now you want to run that um, at minimum, pretty much at all times now. Uh, within the chassis though, that's where we got some of the, the fun stuff. So the prominent one is your rear toe out, your net toe out. Um, within a front wheel drive car, it's super important to be able to have this as an option um, so you can get some entry rotation. Uh, the only change that I made, I went um, with the stiffest rear bar. Um, just making sure, uh, again, that I get as much rotation as possible. The ramp angles with the diff, uh, you've only got two options there, 29.5 and 32 degrees. Uh, the lower number within the ramp angle, the more locking force, so it's more understeer on entry and more oversteer on exit. This is what I use to try and get more oversteer on the throttle. Uh, you've got rear brake valve, so instead of like your traditional brake bias, so as you apply the brake, it'll ramp up um, you know, the same amount until you hit your sort of threshold, uh, at, at which point no more re rear brake pressure will be applied, it's just front brakes. So um, even with this maxed out, if you go to like stomp on the throttle into a heavy braking zone, you will still probably lock a, a front tire. Um, but that's just the, you know, the general notes and little things to, to take into consideration. So I will start at the back and uh, see if I can fight my way somewhat further forward. Um, standing start um, with, uh, with this car should be quite interesting. Uh, I assume we can just dump the clutch and go because um, uh, it doesn't have enough power really to spin up the, uh, the front wheels too much. Get the revs up and uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. Oh yeah, we're off to an absolute cracker. So, something just to probably pay a little bit of attention before we even get to turn one here. Ooh, optimal shift point in this thing is around 5,800 RPM. Oh, we're three wide. <laughs> something that uh, I only learned um, today rather than yesterday. Oh sort of stacking up a little bit on this inside line here. Yeah, he doesn't really want to get through the chicane all that well. But we're moving forward, that's the main thing. Um, reason for the, the choice of using the AI here. One, it's nice to put the um, AI through its paces. And two, um, the big strength of the, the Clio is the fact that you can race really hard pretty much at any track. Oh, we've tracked blockage. Oh, dear. <laughs> but we're good. Car's all right. It is a little bit of a tank, so um, contact is um, almost encouraged in a car like this. Uh, we are up to 29th place. We're up 11. Now, obviously, I'm driving here with AI, but if you want to drive with many others online, um, Apex Racing League has a Clio Cup starting, or Clio Cup League starting very, very soon. Sign-ups are open, and uh, feel free to get stuck into that. Uh, the racing should be absolutely mega. The one sort of big sticking point that um, we've noticed over the years with front-wheel drive cars on iRacing is that you can't really get the back end to step out anymore. It hasn't been a thing for quite some time. And at least then it'll be moderately quick. Um, this car, you definitely want to try and get it to turn on entry. And it will turn on entry. It's not a problem. It may need some setup adjustments to try and make that happen. But um, it, it can rotate. That's not a problem. If you overshoot a corner, as is pretty typical with a front-wheel drive car, 
it's very hard to recover it because they don't have a ton of grip. Like so. <laughs> but even at a track like Knock Hill, you can get some pretty good racing. So to that, uh, that to me indicates that you can get good racing pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Destroyed on a straight line here. Hold it around the outside. That's a lot of curb over the inside. <laughs> um, but on that note, um, the car handles the curbs like an absolute champ. Uh, the TCR class has had uh, uh, improvements for the season. So whether it's going to pull people from that to this, I somehow doubt. But yeah, to my point, is this going to be the most popular car in the service? Probably not. Um, is it bloody good fun and will leagues thrive? I suspect so. Alright, we'll, we'll probably go for the big send into the hairpin here. Even though it's 0.4 back, I think we can do it. Might flag this time, so yeah. There we go. No! Oh, oh, we've got turned. <laughs> Very typical. You try and make a move in the touring car. Or in a front-wheel drive car and there's no room on exit, then uh, it tends to end poorly. That was a bit, a bit of a send, I will concede. Alrighty, so that's <laughs> P35. I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, a little race with the uh, the Clio's at Knockhill. Alright guys, so that was my uh, first impressions there of the Renault Clio RS uh, Gen 5. Um, a really fun little car. Um, you can really battle super hard pretty much any track um, in a car like this. The contact model does seem a little bit weird. Um, hopefully that's just a, a little thing with the AI. Oh, I did hear some reports of it being a little bit suspect um, in an online session as well. So fingers crossed it's not too bad. And given that it's not free content, there's no incentive for, um, or no extra incentive, sorry, for uh, those sort of looking in uh, the direction of front wheel drive to go with this versus the uh, the TCR class, which you know, obviously has uh, multiple manufacturers as well. I think it's a great little car. Um, the fact that we can get the um, outside rear, or sorry, the inside rear um, into the air um, under heavy braking makes me a happy man. Uh, at least does that particularly well. Um, we can get entry rotation, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, the, the car lends itself to fantastic racing. If you want to excel in this particular machinery, uh, the Apex Racing Academy data pack is provided by Luke McKeown. Um, he'll be covering this car in, in the open series that it participates in. It replaces the Jetta this time around um, in Production Car Challenge. For a small multi subscription, uh, you can get uh, the qualifying race setups, BLAB, OLAB, and replay files for not just this car, but um, over 20 other cars. Um, on the service, including uh, our first foray into uh, the NASCAR side of things with the A, B and C car um, upcoming for this new season. Um, we've also still got the weekly coaching sessions in uh, the GT3, the VRS GT Sprint Series uh, for IMSA and for Porsche Cup as well. Um, so feel free to grab the referral code in the description below. So what do you guys think of the Renault Clio? Um, is it the touring car that you've been looking for or was there something else that you wanted added to the service? Um, feel free to let us know in the comments uh, and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, as, and as well, please follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.